Hey, y'all. Merry after Christmas here. Um, going to go over with you my Christmas present here and the little project I'm on. Christmas present was this really nice Ruach. It's upside down right now. Um, it's a Ruach pedal board, <laughs> which um, I asked for for Christmas. And it's a solid wood pedal board thought it was going to be really kind of heavy but it's it's not actually surprisingly so pretty sizable came with the velcro stuck on it already came with the other strips that go on the other side of the pedals that hold it down to it it came with this really nice case which i was not anticipating at all pouches and all that so it has the tape underneath it's got a couple of tie wraps really really nice shipped directly from ireland believe it or not and you know um was ordered through amazon at a really kind of very surprising reasonable price i uh, very shocked at it i'm super super happy with the thing so you know i had all my pedals that i would set out one at a time and use them and such these two over here too i'll go over them in a minute but I used to just take them out and plug in one or two of them or three of them and really didn't have any way to transport them and had to take it out every time and all that this way set it all up leave it this way need to take my sound with me just zip the thing up and take it with me um so now there's a couple of blank spots, as you can see, and I'm just going to go over how this all is going to work because um, it's going to be extremely versatile. So what what you do is um, you have the guitar and the guitar is going to come in to here and the pedals from here on over go in the front of the amp. So in other words, guitar into this, this into the input of the preamp on the guitar. The stuff to the left here goes through the effects loop or between the preamp and the power amp is the effects loop. So you come out of the preamp with whatever you're doing with your amp, you go in the effects loop and modify the sound before it goes into the power amp and I'll go into that you know right now. So the guitar comes in here and the idea is you have a tuner pedal, and this is one of the things I need to get is I need to get a tuner pedal. This one's a good tuner, but it only has one input. But what's even better than that is you get a volume pedal, which I'm going to get, because the volume pedal has it one in but two outs. It's got one to continue in the, the pedal board, but the other out is a tuner out, which is really cool because you could turn the volume all the way off and tune your guitar without making a whole bunch of sound and then you could just go rock right into your volume again which that's perfect um, so I'm getting one of those then you take that and that way the volume control is just an extension of the volume control on the guitar if you put it in the front of all this so that's my thinking on that so you go from the volume control into the you know the Dunlop crybaby here now what I was using before I got this. These two pedals aren't going to make it onto the pedal board for now, but this this dynamic filter I bought, gosh, in the, the early to mid-80s, along with this expression pedal for this. This was kind of the Jerry Gar Garcia wah sound that he used to do. He was known for using a dynamic filter. Um, dynamic filter basically is like the, you know, the, the crybaby, but it's kind of more automatic um this gives you control over what this automates because this automates it based on how you're hitting the strings and the speed at which and all that stuff this gives you more direct control i mean this is what this was designed to give this more direct control but i, I this is just in my opinion a better way to go at least for now i could change my mind um so that goes out into the compressor which gives you some sustain and, you know, kind of levels things out if you want to say it that, but it's, that's a, just a, a real oversimplified description of compressor pedal that goes into this, you know, MXR is Dunlop 
so these two guys are MXRs, goes into this custom badass modified overdrive. Now, here's the thing about this pedal. I love this pedal. If you came to me and said, hey, you got to go play someplace, Brian, and you could only bring one pedal, I may change my mind based on the next pedal I'm going to describe, but this would be the only, this would be the one I would bring if I only had one to bring. It is just, it, 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 do, it isn't a distortion pedal, but it gets pretty darn close and it does everything you want an overdrive to do. Um, you know, it's, I, I like it. I mean, a lot of people like tube screamers and tube screamers are great. This just happens to be the one I have and I really like it a lot. Now, this one is going to go to this slot here. This guy has a brother that I'm picking up right away. It's the MXR Custom Badass um, Distortion 78, I think it is. Um, I read all about it. It pairs up super nice with this. Gives you that Marshall Plexi Distortion sound, so you can get that British sound out of that um there are other things you can get like that but i, I want to pair it up with his brother so goes from the compressor to the overdrive to the distortion pedal and for right now then that's going to go into now get amps have either a a um effects loop you know send which that comes out of the amp and goes to the pedal board. So the items I just described is going to go into the input of the amp. Then afterwards you got preamp out. I don't know if you can see that preamp out. That's like the effects loop send and power amp in. That's the effects loop return. So the preamp comes out. Then the other devices in the pedal board do their trick and it comes into the power amp in and then the amp does its job. So What's going to happen is these devices here go into the preamp in on the amp uh, along with the distortion and then the the, the um, then the the uh, no they go into the input of the amp sorry then the preamp out is going to come into here and then this is all going to come back into the power amp in so this device here as you can see is a base graphic equalizer and what's interesting is i got this for my base and it's it's a behringer it's kind of cheap it's plastic but it does its job and it fixes a problem with the hot rod deluxe you know the hot rod deluxe unlike you know like my fender half stack and most every other amp it has a known problem with the master volume that when you go from one to two, it's like going one to eight. And one of the solutions of it is, is to put a volume control or a graphic equalizer control in the effects loop. So you can control either just plain outright all the volume and not even have to mess with the master volume control on the amp or, you know, the equalizer itself. Now, you might be asking yourself, why are you using a bass graphic equalizer on a guitar amp? Well, I found out that you can play guitar through a bass equalizer, but you're, you shouldn't play a bass through a guitar equalizer. And it's because, and this is the interesting part, and I don't know if you can see this. See this 10K? Most guitar equalizers don't have the 10K band. The bass equalizer actually has a higher a higher tone or higher pitch um, range than the guitar equalizer does. And it's because guitar equalizers, and this is what I found out, are more geared toward min-range, and basses actually use some of those high-frequency areas, so it's more versatile. So the effects loop sends out of the preamp, comes into here so I can control the sound because the other the volume control is going to be in front of the amp so I can control the volume and tune but this is going to control the tone and actually it, it can really sparkle up the tone if you want it to go and be in an effects loop and then that goes into things that color 
the sound if you want to, or actually phase the sound. This is all distortion, compression, overdrive going into the, you know, into the front of the preamp. Then the preamp comes out, and now I'm going to modify the sound by using a chorus. You know, um, I love chorus, especially for acoustic guitars, chorus and delay. Um, but also with electric, you got to have that delay to have any opportunity to sound like David Gilmour or things of that nature. Um, so I'm, I've got those there. And of course, a loop station is the last. And then it goes back into, you know, the power amp in or the effects loop return. Now, I've got this thing for power supply. And there's people that would say, hey, look. You need to get a real power supply or else you're going to have a hum problem. These things work, but they're relatively cheap, and, and I get it. But my house has a hum problem regardless. Um, this might be because of old copper, might be because of bad ground. Um, I'm eventually going to have to have an electrician look over my, you know, you know, my wiring in my house to try to get rid of that hum. But until then, I'm not going to try to solve a hum problem that's not going to go away anyway. So basically that's the project. A lot of versatility is going to exist in this from the wah, the volume control at the front, tuning, um, compressing, overdrive, the distortion when I get it. Um, I'm going to be ordering that today. Using the effects loop, the effects loop coming in. Graphic equalizer, chorus, delay, loop station, and then out back into the amp and all the things that the amp can do too. Um, there's bound to be a couple of effects. It's, you know, some people are going to say, hey, Brian, you really need to add this or that. And I'm totally open to looking into that. I just got to get this up and running first. My next video is going to be, you know, with all the stuff connected together and showing the variations of the sound. So I hope you all enjoyed this. Maybe you learned a couple things. Maybe you're going to point out some things that I need to learn. Either way, um, Merry Christmas and joy to you all.